We've been laying some important groundwork over the last several lectures. We derived several important distributional characteristics of the least squares estimators, in particular, their means, variances, and standard errors. We then determine the form of the sampling distributions of the least squares estimators of the beta parameters when the model error terms are normally distributed. When that is the case, the least squares estimators are normally distributed themselves. We also showed that in this situation, the standardized versions of the least squares estimators have a standard normal distribution. However, because the expressions for the variances and standard errors of the least squares estimators involve the variance of the model error terms, when that quantity is unknown, which it will be in really all situations in practice, we cannot calculate the exact values of the standardized versions of these estimators. We then showed how we can estimate the variance of the model error term. This development led naturally to a two-sided f-test about the slope coefficient in the simple linear regression model. Using that estimator of the model error term, we then obtained estimators of the variances and standard errors of the beta parameters. Now that we have estimators of the variances and standard errors of the beta parameters, we can calculate what are called studentized versions of those estimators and determine their sampling distributions. That is what we're going to discuss in this lecture video. Once we've done that, we'll be able to very easily develop procedures for testing more general hypotheses about the beta parameters, as well as procedures for constructing confidence interval estimates of those parameters. So here's an outline of what we'll be looking at in this lecture. We'll first look at studentizing the least squares estimator beta 1 hat. We'll review the expressions for the variance and the standard error of beta 1 hat. We'll then obtain estimators of the variance and standard error of beta 1 hat. And then finally, we'll calculate the studentized version of beta 1 hat using those estimators and identify its sampling distribution. We'll then do the same thing for beta 0 hat. We'll review the expressions for the variance and standard error of the sampling distribution of beta 0 hat. We'll then obtain estimators of the variance and standard error of beta 0 hat. And then finally, we will calculate the studentized version of beta 0 hat and identify its sampling distribution. So let's look first at studentizing beta 1 hat. So let's review the form of the estimators of the variance and standard error of beta 1 hat. So recall that the variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat are as given here. The variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma squared divided by s sub xx. So this is the variance of the model error terms divided by the corrected sum of squares of the explanatory variable x. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat is the square root of that variance, and so it's the square root of sigma squared over s of xx. Now, if we don't know the value of sigma squared, the variance of the model error term, then although we know the form of these expressions, their values will remain unknown to us. Now, if we have an estimator, sigma hat squared, of the variance of the model error term, we can obtain estimators of the variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat by substituting in the estimator, sigma hat squared, for sigma squared in these expressions. And so the estimated variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma hat squared over s sub xx. And as you'll recall, our estimate is given by the mean squared error in the ANOVA table for the regression analysis. And so the estimated variance of beta 1 hat is MSE divided by the corrected sum of squares of the x's. The estimated standard deviation of the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat is the square root of that estimated variance. And so that's given by the square root of sigma hat squared over s sub xx, 
or the square root of MSE divided by S of XX. Now the number of degrees of freedom associated with each of these estimators is n minus two, which is equal to the number of degrees of freedom associated with the estimator sigma hat squared. Next, let's look at how to calculate the studentized version of beta one hat, and then we will determine its distribution as well. Let's first look at the standardized version of beta one hat. Now recall that in general, in order to standardize a random variable, we subtract from that random variable the mean of its distribution, and then we divide the difference by the standard error of that difference. Now, when the quantity that we're subtracting off is constant, the standard error of the difference is equal to the standard error of the random variable itself. And so that's what's happening here. The standardized version of beta 1 hat is obtained by subtracting from it the mean of its sampling distribution, which because beta 1 hat is unbiased, the mean of its sampling distribution is beta 1. Then we divide uh, that difference by the standard error of that difference. And because beta 1 is a constant, the standard error of the difference is equal to the standard error of beta 1 hat. The standard error of beta 1 hat is the square root of uh, sigma squared sub beta 1 hat, which is equal to, in this case, uh, the square root of sigma squared over s sub xx. Now the mean and the sampling distribution of this standardized quantity, which we are denoting uh, with z notation, so z sub beta 1 hat, the mean of the sampling distribution of this standardized uh, version is zero and its standard deviation is one. In addition, if the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat is normal, if it's uh, Gaussian, then the standardized version of beta 1 hat has a standard normal distribution. However, if the standard error sigma squared uh, sub beta 1 hat is unknown, then the standardized version cannot be calculated and therefore it cannot be used for making inferences about beta 1. We can estimate the standardized version z sub beta 1 hat by replacing the variance of beta 1 hat by its estimator in the formula for the standardized version of beta 1 hat. Now since this is an estimate of z sub beta 1 hat, this fact should be indicated in the notation. For example, we can do this using hat notation, and so we would have z hat sub beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 hat minus the mean of its sampling distribution, beta 1, divided by the estimated standard error of beta 1 hat. And that is given by the square root of sigma hat squared sub beta 1 hat, or the square root of sigma hat squared divided by s sub xx. And remember that sigma hat squared is the MSE, the mean squared error from the ANOVA table for the regression analysis. Now note that even if beta 1 hat is normally distributed, so that the standardized version is standard normal, the estimator of that standardized version, z hat sub beta 1 hat, will be only approximately standard normal and we could denote this uh, in the following way. So z hat sub beta 1 hat, and then a tilde with a dot over it to represent is approximately distributed as a standard normal distribution. But we don't need to rely on this standard normal approximation to the sampling distribution of the estimated standardized quantity, however. In the early 1900s, William Seely Gossett, a chemist employed by Guinness Brewery as head brewer and head experimental brewer, derived the exact sampling distribution of this kind of statistic. Gossett published this work under the pen name of student and called the distribution the t-distribution. And because of this, the distribution is called student's t-distribution in his honor. So the studentized version of beta 1 hat is obtained, as we saw a few slides back, by replacing the variance of beta 1 hat by its estimator in the formula for the standardized version of beta 1 hat. 
instead of the notation Z hat, a studentized statistic is typically denoted using the letter T. And we're going to follow that convention. So the studentized version of beta 1 hat will be denoted in these notes by T sub beta 1 hat. And it's equal to beta 1 hat minus uh, beta 1 divided by the estimated standard error of beta 1 hat, which is the square root of sigma hat squared over S of xx, or equivalently, the square root of MSE over S of xx. Now, if beta 1 hat is normally distributed, then the studentized version of beta 1 hat varies according to students' t distribution with degrees of freedom that are equal to the number of degrees of freedom associated with sigma hat squared sub beta 1 hat, which as we said before, uh, for the simple linear regression model is equal to n minus 2. Next, we'll do this same thing in studentizing beta 0 hat. So let's review the estimators of the variance and standard error of beta 0 hat. The variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of beta 0 hat are given by the following expressions. So the actual variance of beta 0 hat is equal to sigma squared times the sum of the squared x values divided by n times s of xx. The actual standard deviation of beta 0 hat is the square root of that variance. And so it's the square root of sigma squared times the uncorrected sum of the squares of the x's divided by n times s sub xx. And again, if sigma squared, the variance of the model error terms, is unknown, then these characteristics of the sampling distribution of beta 0 hat uh, are unknown as well. Estimators of the variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of beta 0 hat can be obtained by replacing the unknown sigma squared in these expressions uh, with its estimator sigma hat squared. And so the estimated variance of beta 0 hat is equal to sigma hat squared times the sum of the squared x values divided by n times s of xx, which is equal to the mean squared error times the sum of the squared x's divided by n times s of xx. The estimated standard deviation of beta 0 hat is equal to the square root of that variance, and so it's the square root of the mean squared error times uh, the sum of the squared x values divided by n times s sub xx. Again, the number of degrees of freedom associated with each of these estimators is n minus 2, which is equal to the number of degrees of freedom associated with the estimator sigma hat squared. Next, we'll calculate the studentized version of beta 0 hat and identify its distribution. To do that, we'll first remind ourselves of the form of the standardized version of beta 0 hat. The standardized version of beta 0 hat is obtained by subtracting from it the mean of its sampling distribution, which is beta 0 because beta 0 hat is unbiased. And then we divide that difference by uh, the standard error of that difference. And again, because the quantity that we're subtracting off is constant, uh, the standard error of the difference is equal to the standard error of beta 0 hat itself. And so the standardized version of beta 0 hat is equal to beta 0 hat minus beta 0 divided by the square root of sigma squared times the sum of the squared x values divided by n times s of xx. The mean of the sampling distribution of the standardized version of beta 0 hat is 0, and its standard deviation is 1. In addition, if beta 0 hat is itself normally distributed, then the standardized version of beta 0 hat therefore has a standard normal distribution. But again, if the standard error is unknown, the standardized version can't be calculated, and therefore it cannot be used for making inferences about beta 0. The studentized version of beta 0 hat is obtained by replacing the variance of beta 0 hat by its estimator in the formula for the standardized version of beta 0 hat. And this gives a t value, t sub beta 0 hat, the studentized version of beta 0 hat, being equal to 
beta zero hat minus beta zero divided by its estimated standard error, which is the square root of sigma hat squared or MSE times the sum of the squared X values divided by N sub X X. Now, if beta zero hat is normally distributed, then the studentized version of beta zero hat varies according to student's T distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the number of degrees of freedom associated with sigma hat squared sub beta zero hat, which in the case of simple linear regression is n minus two. So that's all for this lecture video. I'll see you in the next lecture video.